hymn is printed in your bulletins. Our worship begins on page 355, and over in the family area, the books are on the rack over there against the wall. 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, God, and forever. Amen. We continue with the glory on the next page. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King. Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, 
In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. O God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us who know you now by faith to your presence where we may see your glory face to face through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. We will now pray the psalm responsively by half verse. Give the king your justice, O God. that he may rule your people righteously, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field. In his time shall the righteous flourish. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall pay tribute. All the kings shall bow down before him. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence. A reading from Ephesians. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news 
of the boundless riches of Christ, and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things, so that through the chur church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The members of the pageant can take their places. So exciting for all of you. We have a pop-up pageant this morning, which means there's been little rehearsal, and we'll see how it goes. You have a part, all of you, in your um, bulletin. There's, you'll want to follow along because you have a response early on and one towards the end. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, mysterious people from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has born, been born King of the Jews? We observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. Hear ye, hear ye. Okay. Start again from the beginning. From the beginning? So you're just the narrator. Just read this, and then someone else will come in again. Okay. And then you're going to read this, and I'm going to read this. Okay? You just start. Sure. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, mysterious people from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child? When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. Hear ye, hear ye. All ye anxious seek and strive for people, there is in the Messiah to be born. Now the Messiah is in Judea, for so it has been predicted by the prophets, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For from you shall come a ruler who is by then Herod secretly called for the Magi. What was the exact time the star appeared? Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and show him the child. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising. until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary and his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream, Do not return to Herod. they left for their country by another road.
why just read a gospel when you can enact it? Thank you, everyone, for participating. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Happy Epiphany. At Epiphany, we reflect further on the gift of God incarnating among us, realizing that it isn't just a one-time gift. It's a gift that keeps on giving. As the Magi bring gifts to the family of the Christ child, we are pointed toward noticing the God-given gifts in our own lives. Along those lines, I want to share an epiphany I had recently. But first, I need to make a confession. These two things, my confession and my epiphany, go hand in hand, one informing the other. My confession is that I have been squandering the gift of living in this beautiful area of Southern California for a number of years because I became obsessed with the idea that I should be able to afford a two-bedroom condo, a two-bedroom place, two-bedroom home close to work. And while that might be true in many parts of the country, we all know that we make trade-offs to live in paradise. But I lost sight of that. And I was so busy trying to solve this dilemma that I seldom enjoyed a walk at the beach, for instance, or appreciated the beauty of my condo. It is a small condo in terms of it's just a one bedroom, but it's spacious and it's got great light. It's in a nice, quiet neighborhood and I have great neighbors. And it's 10 minutes from the Pacific Ocean. (laughs) That's a gift. Now, to clarify, my wanting more has nothing to do with how I manage my finances. I tithe 10% of my salary back to St. Andrews every year. But what I realize is that my intention to tithe was basically happening in a vacuum because it's part of my spiritual practice So on one hand, I was feeling really good that I'm tithing 10%. But on the other hand, I was not being what Scripture calls a cheerful giver. I was whining about not affording a bigger place. That epiphany that I was squandering the gifts that God had given me sort of evolved over several weeks, starting with some words that Mother Hannah spoke a number of times a month or so ago, and she said that we ought to appreciate that we actually have a home. That really struck a chord with me. This morning's reading from Ephesians illustrates what another author calls looking through the eyes of love. That's what the Apostle Paul is up to here. As he explains, grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ. The mention of Gentiles tells us this news is for everyone, not just the Jews, but also the non-Jews, the Gentiles. Paul's sense of God's abundance, of seeing the world through the eyes of love, is in direct contrast to how Our passage from Matthew describes King Herod. Herod sees the world through a lens of scarcity and fear. When he charges the Magi to go and search diligently, we understand it's not because he wants to pay homage to the Christ child as he states. Rather, Herod sees the world through a lens of threat, worrying that somebody more powerful than he might bring down the rule he's established. The Magi, however, like Paul, also take in the world through the eyes of love. We are told, when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy, and they offered him gifts. In response to God's gracious gift, the Magi and the Apostle Paul all enter into the human work of spreading that good news to the rest of the world. Now, before his conversion to Christianity, Paul persecuted Christians, viewing others through that lens of threat. 
But as part of his own conversion, he temporarily experienced blindness. So when he accepted Christ into his life, he literally sees, literally saw the world through new eyes, through the eyes of love, becoming aware of how God's grace, mercy, and love are plentiful enough for everyone, even him, a guy with a checkered past. So I've been feeling a little bit like Paul since I've had my epiphany because my blindness has been lifted and I can actually see the gifts in my life through the eyes of love. A friend of mine helped shift that even more so for me one day as I explained what great neighbors I have but complained that I could hear them and that irritated me that I had to hear the people above me and the people beside me. And she said, well, what if, what if you pretended that you live in a really big house and your extended family lives in the house with you and so when you hear them upstairs, you're simply hearing the joyful movement of your loved ones all around. That's what I mean by seeing the world through the eyes of love seeing the splendor of all of God's creation, appreciating each other and our ministry together, and remembering that we can go to the beach without getting on a plane. The world won't be changed in that moment, but the way we see the world will be changed. That's what the Magi, Paul, and Jesus ask us to do, to see the world through God's eyes, through the eyes of love. So I challenge you this week to find something in your life in need of reframing. This gift of life is meant to be enjoyed thoroughly, not squandered as we wish for something more or something else. And it is a simple first step. Simply commit to seeing the world through the eyes of love. Amen. Turning to page 358 and standing as you're able, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty,
We will now pray responsively using form six found on page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, For this community, the nation, and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Susan, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, including those on our parish prayer list, Lynn, Tova, Douglas, Amy, Pete, Andy, Renee, Evelyn, Evan, Mike, Dominic, Brett, and Jerry. And for comfort, the Bach family, Terrell and Joe Tyra. We pray for the following members of the armed forces, Mark and Frank. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we, play, we pray for Iglesia Anglicana de Chile. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and people of St. John's Chula Vista, our bishops and all other bishops attending the provincial, provincial House of Bishops meeting. We also pray for those who aren't yet able to worship with us in person. May they know there's always a place for everyone here at St. Andrews. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life including the ushering and vestry ministries. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forevermore. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, especially Barbara Burney and Doris Yates. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your way to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with each other. Distance sign. <laughs> You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to St. Andrews. We're delighted to have you all with us this morning. A couple updates. Um, the railings are up, but they're not finished because they are not extending as far as they were supposed to, so they have to be redone a little bit. Um, but the contractor has told us we are expecting a, what do you call it, Debbie, sub Substantial completion? Substan yeah, substantial completion this Friday. <laughs> Which means then the next week they'll do all the little things where we say, oh, a piece of paint's missing here and there. Um, but feel free to walk down the hallway. The cabinetry's almost all in. It's looking really wonderful. Um, the parish hall's not open right now, but uh, soon we'll have that open so you can peek in there too. The good news is that our fifth egret is almost filled in, which means we have uh, $469,000 in commitments for our 22 pledge budget, and our goal is 525. So thank you all who stretched this past week. It, every little bit makes such a big difference. And so we'll be finalizing the budget next week, and I'm sure we'll get to our goal because 100 households have pledged. And usually we see about 130, 140 pledging. So a few more should come in this week. The Interfaith Shelter is coming to us February 6th through the 20th. And we don't yet know what it looks like exactly because, you know, as all the health guidelines change, we'll find out more information. But we're getting ready for it as, as if it's happening just like we know it. And so that means we need some team leads. I already have a shower team lead and I have um, a shopping person. There's, I, I need an overnight host lead and a meal lead and we only have to provide dinner for one week. Bethlehem Lutheran's gonna do the dinners for the other week, so that is helpful. Oh, and I have a laundry person too. So talk to me if you think you can do a little bit of organizing. You don't have to fill all the roles. We'll get up a sign-up genius. We, I have a list of all the people I think that would help with those various things. We just need somebody to be the coordinator and say, hey, by the way, do you remember you were scheduled to greet today? We are going to have a liturgy of light and remembrance out on the labyrinth Wednesday, February 2nd at 6.30. We often do that in the chapel during Advent, and I decided there was enough going on in Advent, and we need the light of the Epiphany, so we'll do that. A place to call out names of loved ones you've lost over the past year, and time for um, individual anointing, so join us for that. Next week, we'll have the candidate forum, so it's time to vote for a new um, incoming vestry members. We have five spots because of one person moving away. Um, and so you'll meet those vestry candidates next week after church. And then the following week, the 23rd, we'll have our annual meeting. So I hope you'll plan to stay for that so that we can have a quorum and actually um, elect those vestry candidates. <laughs> Who has a birthday or an anniversary this week? Anybody? Bob, do you? A birthday for Bob. So let's turn to 830, and we will use prayer 50 for Bob's birthday. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Bob as he begins another year. 
grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God's blessing be upon you today and remain with you always. And just a reminder of how we receive communion these days here at St. Andrews. We'll have one station here, one station here. We'll be intincting, dipping the bread into the wine. If you want to receive both bread and wine, put out both hands. If you just want the bread, then just one hand. If you'd like a blessing instead, arms over your chest. If you need gluten-free, let us know. If you're not able to come up to the altar, uh, let an usher know and we'll bring communion to you. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. We continue with the great thanksgiving found on page 369. The Lord be with you. And also you. Lift up your hearts. And lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you, you forever, forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law. 
to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God, our might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. We re <clears throat> remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our forebears, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Miriam, Ruth, and Deborah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and lives for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Our post-communion prayer is found on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord's face turn towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and appreciating our gifts. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, God. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh, and